In this clip, I'm going to talk about one of the classic cases of international law, reparation for injuries. The International Court of Justice uh, gave its advisory opinion on 11th April 1949. This advisory opinion involved unfortunate story of this man, Mr. Bernadotte. Mr. Bernadotte was an experienced Swedish diplomat and due to his experiences, he was appointed by the United Nations as a mediator in Palestine. This appointment came after the outbreak of war between uh, Israel and Arab countries, triggered by the declaration of independence by, by Israel in May 1948. As a UN mediator, he was sent to Jerusalem in order to fulfill this very difficult diplomatic task. Unfortunately, however, in September uh, 1948, Mr. Bernadotte was shot by an armed Jewish group. He was in the UN vehicle and he was shot through an open window. So the assassination of Mr. Bernadotte uh, caused an outcry at the United Nations and the UN General Assembly has decided to request an advisory opinion from the International Court of Justice. So the question put forward before the International Court of Justice was the following. Can the United Nations bring an international claim, more specifically against Israel, which was controlling the part of Jerusalem in which the assassination of Mr. Bernadotte took place? And you might think that the, well, the answer should be affirmative, but this uh, advisory opinion was requested a few years after the birth of the United Nations. Therefore, at the time, there were still fundamental questions uh, left in order to understand the position of the United Nations within the international legal order. So this advisory opinion contains three major elements and I'd like to address them in turn. First of all, the basic issue is whether or not the UN United Nations can bring an international claim for damage suffered by the United Nations itself, by the organization itself. And according to the court, in order to answer this question, we first need to decide whether or not the UN possessed international legal personality. And the court indeed said, well, yes, the, the, the United Nations possessed uh, international legal personality. And why is that? Well, in order for the UN to fulfill its functions, to possess international legal personality was indeed indispensable. But the court, International Court of Justice, reminded us that to possess international legal personality doesn't mean that the United Nations is the same as the state. Well, rights and obligations of states are comprehensive, but by contrast, the rights and obligations of, of international, uh, the United Nations depends on the purposes and functions uh, specified or implied uh, in, the, in the founding documents, the Charter of the United Nations. So there are indeed differences between the United Nations as an international organization and being a state. So now we, assu we can assume that the United Nations can indeed uh, bring an international claim for damage suffered by the United Nations itself, but what about the damage suffered a cause to its agent, Mr. Bernadotte? Well, if you look at the provisions of the UN Charter, they don't say anything about the UN capacity to claim damage caused to its agent. But the International Court of Justice said, well, don't worry, there is another option, which is the concept of the implied powers. So according to the court, uh, United Nations possessed uh, powers, not only those provided explicitly in the UN Charter, but also those powers granted by necessary implication as being essential to the performance of its duties. And in this case, Indeed, the capacity to bring a uh, claim, for, uh, claim da for reparation for damage caused to Mr. Bernadotte is indeed part of this implied powers. But why is that? Well, as a UN, UN needs to protect its agent 
and the UN United Nations need to safeguard its institutional independence. So in order to protect its agents and its, its, uh, to safeguard its institutional independence, U United Nations needed to have indeed the capacity claim, uh, to, to, cl to bring uh, international claim, not only for a damage caused to uh, the, the organization itself, but also its agents. So now we know uh, more or less the capacity of the UN to claim international, uh, to bring international claim, but what about the claim against a non-member state? So this question was relevant because at the time Israel was not yet a member of the United Nations. Israel joined the United Nations one month after the delivery of this advisory opinion. And the court said, yes, indeed, UN can bring claim against a non-member non state. And in order to justify its conclusion, the, United, uh, the International Court of Justice put forward the notion of objective international personality. What do you mean by that? Well, at the time, as many as 50 states were a member of the members of the United Nations, which, uh, well, at the time, represented the majority of the vast majority of the members of the international community. So due to this universality of the membership, international legal personality of the United Nations should be recognized uh, not only by its member states but also non-member states as well. So in summary, the, in the, the court gave an affirmative answer to the overall question put forward by the United Nations General Assembly. So yes, indeed, the United Nations has the capacity to bring an international claim for damage caused by the UN itself, as well as for damage suffered uh, caused to its agent, Mr. Bernadotte. And finally, this claim can also be raised, invoked against not only against UN member state, but also against a non-member state as well. And this conclusion might not be surprising, but the reasoning reaching to the conclusion has had a profound impact on the development of international law, especially international institutional law.